As always guys, this is just for entertainment purposes only, this is not financial advice. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. I would like to discuss the BISF stock, which has been devastated this year as so many other stocks have, but BISF has suffered considerably more than other stocks. Now why is that? If you are a BISF stock owner, listen to this video to see if you should buy, hold or sell. Is this an opportunity or is this a disaster? Guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Road Trip to Fire and I would like to help you reach financial independence and help you analyze stocks and make the right decision. So first, a small 30 seconds introduction, BISF. BISF is the biggest chemical company in the world. So they have a really great moat. They don't have that much competition, really. That's, that's a really small risk in this company. Their moat is really, really good. And while you might think about some old dated chemical factories, when you think about BASF, actually they are so much more. They are investing into the future in the latest battery and recycling technologies, like I will show you into this video. Guys, if you like this video, please like, please subscribe. I'm a small time YouTuber and this is going to help my channel so much right now the stock price has been it's at the same place as 2008 before the financial crisis so the stock's been devastated some would say oh in 10 years the stock did nothing or 14 years if you had invested in october 2007 you would be at a loss right now well not really because BASF has given a nice dividend every single year when we do look at the revenue in the past since 2009 we can see indeed that in 2021 there has been a significant growth of revenue okay it's not spectacular but it has kept up with inflation and i have reason to believe that this growth will accelerate now when we are looking at the analyst predictions then we do see that they are not very positive about bisf in the short term we're actually they're predicting a decline in 2022 and even worse in 2023. Uh, but they do say that by 2026, things are going to be all right again. And when we look at the growth, we do see again growth, slow, low single digit growth. Is, does that mean the analysts are correct? To be honest, I do not fully agree with the analysts on the short term here. They're really, you can see, in 2022 Q4, they're predicting half of the income compared to 2021. That's 400 million in 2021. They had 800 million something. So I do not fully agree with that statement. And BASF has agreed with this in this amazing earnings guidance. We can see that the net income is expected to be 2.1 billion compared to the 1.6 billion that analysts were expecting so that means basically what BISF here is saying all right we have higher gas prices guys but don't worry because the companies our customers are also willing to pay more for our product guys BISF is the leading chemistry company worldwide and they have a huge moat also, what we are seeing with BISF, they are investing a lot. You can see here cash from investing activities. You can see every year, especially the last years, especially some years, they have been investing. Unfortunately, some investments have not gone well. So there's a Nord Stream investment, although maybe they can still recuperate something there. There's plans to convert that Nord Stream to an NLG terminal so who knows you might they might still get something out of that um but generally they are heavily growing you can see that they're investing for 25 billion uh by the next four years so that's huge mostly in asia pacific and in europe but also in north america where we recently saw that just four days ago they announced that we, they would invest 700 million in a plant in the us they're also and i think that's also important is where are they currently so they are only in europe for uh 22.8 percent i would say probably like 85 percent of that is in germany so that's something that you have to take into account there is a gas risk 
if Russia cuts the gas tomorrow, then Germany does not have enough gas, basically, and they will have to make some tough decisions or at least save a lot on energy. It's very hard to predict that risk, but you can see that's only 22.8%. And it's not going to be the full year, right? Like by summer, uh, it's only going to be the three months in winter. So probably only five to six percent of that rev of that income is at risk. Although, if you're about to go to crisis, then also their um, yeah their customer base could have a hard time. So what do we see here for the market uh, for all the risks at BASF is seeing? So they are probably more negative than positive. Uh, right now, so they're seeing risk for market growth. Uh, so depending if there will be a recession or not, the margins that's based on what customers are willing to pay and also the price of gas. So those things are hard to predict. Those are the business biggest risks. But aside from that, they don't see much risk. They do see some currency risk as well. But to be honest, I think with the strengthening dollar, and the euro that is going down, I think that's actually a positive thing that is happening there. I think BISF is going to see benefits there in its earnings in the US. And it's going to be able to export cheaper from Europe. So these are two benefits that BISF is going to get from that. More proof that BISF is investing is just on the side of BISF. You can see they are investing into the future. They're going to build a second bourbon site in China. That's how they call their uh, their chemical uh, sites. And they're going to, they already started on the first plants, but they will be operating extra plants by 2023 when they keep expanding. But also very, I'm also very enthusiastic about their battery material business where they're investing on basically they are gambling a lot. Well, it's not really a gamble because in Europe it's already legislation and they're investing in plants in Finland and Germany for battery recycling. So they are up to date with the latest technology and they are continuing to further strengthen their focus on battery materials and battery recycles. So this shows this is not an aging, dying company stuck in some old chemistry business they are along with the latest technology in battery recycling if you're investing in BASF you are absolutely investing into the future of Europe and hopefully later on also the United States when they will follow with batteries you can see their two biggest plants in Europe so they have one in Germany with 125 production facilities and another one 31 plants in Antwerp plant clusters 46 assets so we can see that the one in Germany is considerably higher, but also do not underestimate the size of their plant in Antwerp. It's also a pretty, pretty big plant. And again, uh, to be honest, in Belgium, the risk of gas is much lower. Their plant in, is less, uh, less at risk. Here you can see an article in the Brussels Times where they are checking, is Belgium at risk of having gas supply problems in the short term? So the Belgian prime minister is saying they have 18 interconnection points, can therefore move gas in all directions. And where is the gas coming from? Half of the Belgian gas is coming from LNG terminals and the other 43% is coming from Norway. Only 6.5% of the imports is coming from Russian gas, but that is already coming through the terminals. So it's actually really easy to replace. So. Belgium will be solid there with the other countries, but of course, yeah, you can only send a limited amount to, to Germany, to those pipelines. So that's just limited. We can send probably some additional across Netherlands, but even there it's limited as well. So we will not be able to help Germany with 100%. So that simply will not be possible. That has the downside that we can't help Germany, but the benefit is that Belgium will not run out of gas. So the BASF facility in Belgium should be pretty safe. We also have nuclear power in Belgium, so not really any problems there. Financially, BASF is also quite fine. They have a great balance sheet, 
they can probably pay off their cash in a f their debts in a few years although they do have quite a lot of debt but that's related to their investments and they spent a lot on dividends so they do spend a lot on dividends i think like it was like six billion a year so if they ever are in need of cash all they have to do is get rid of the dividend now is the dividend safe as dividend if you are a dividend investor you might want to know that so we can see since 2000 that actually every year BASF has raised the dividend and was supported even in 2008 we can see that BASF has given a dividend and only in 2009 we can see that there was a small cut in dividend so it's possible if the gas price would cut off that we going to see a cut in dividend that is possible but generally the dividend even in the worst of crises in 2008 the dividend has remained quite stable and has been raising so this should be okay BASF is not some simple startup that is going to go bankrupt even if they can't produce in one of their plants in the world for a few months then they will still be fine by the way thanks to the drop in share price of fear in the markets you can now see that the dividend has reached 7.88 percent so that's really nice if you are a dividend investor so should you buy should you sell sell the stock that's probably the next question i can't make that decision for you you need to do your own research but what i can tell you is how i decide to buy or sell a stock so of course i have something you call my 10 flags that that i that helped me decide on um, buying or selling a stock so what you're seeing here red red is definitely not very good but we're seeing here that i have five green and five orange flags so they have a low price to sale and pe ratio that's something i like we also checked the debt and equity ratio is just within bounds they can pay it back in just a few years and they do have a lot of cash on their balance so i'm not so worried well long-term investment cash but okay that's fine they also have a very very nice dividend that's something that i really like i like less that they have to pay out 60 percent to give that dividend their margins are also a little bit close so 25 percent gross six percent net i don't know yet what the higher gas prices will do to these margins estimated growth um yeah that's hard i think 1.5 is what the analysts are predicting the coming three years so i have to be clear about that uh further down the future it's getting harder but it's not impossible and we do try to make growth expectations for the coming 10 years also build bit based on the past and on the investments that we see the company doing buybacks they're not doing any buybacks of shares that's not necessarily a red flag i would prefer to see a bit more buybacks instead of such a high dividend but that's all right and then i'm going to factor in price target low what if you have negative growth what if the bears are right russia cuts down the gas there is a big recession in in europe should you then sell 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 or what should you do and then if there is a modest four percent and nine percent growth i personally think it will be like it will lie somewhere between four and nine but i did want to make the bear case and the bull case just to show you that you should not panic if you're holding the stock so when we are looking at the valuation i did i used uh, the two-stage free cash flow to equity it's similar to um, to a discount cash flow model so what or it's a type of discount cash flow model so what are my inputs um, risk-free rate 10-year bonds it's zero percent by the way but i'm already taking a three percent into account also a risk premium of five percent so just to say even given the current inflation this is a pretty conservative model and then i just put in the current parameter shares outstanding current price per share and last but not least the most important growth minus one percent so if i put in minus one percent even then i see it's creating at a current discount of 60 percent and i can put a price target of 71 now, if I should raise that growth 4%, which is already more realistic in my opinion, given all of the new investments they are doing, 
and the gas it's it's something really temporary guys don't worry too much about it then we're getting a price start of 88 euros that, that i think the share price is worth should we have a really bullish growth i think that's probably too much i don't think we're going to see nine percent growth but let's try it anyway in that case you would have a price target of 115 so if i put that in my excel all together we're seeing that the current price again it's 43 euros and we can really see that there is a large upside for this stock in any scenario even if there is negative growth guys if you like this type of videos please like please subscribe and i hope i will see you next time